Hi, it's Jan Beta, and you probably remember this thing from the recent um, Atari Mega 1 Mega ST um, restoration video, where I took care of the um, really yellowed and crusty uh, case and the keyboard. Uh, that now looks a whole lot better, even though it's, of course, it's not perfect given the condition it was in. I think it is nearly impossible to restore it to to new mint condition again, but it's pretty close to mint. So um, I'm pretty satisfied still with this. And I said in the last video that I was going to do a little bit of an electronics uh, restoration on this thing too. And that's uh, what I'm planning to do today. Um, actually, I wanted to put new capacitors in this today, but I really I don't have all the capacitors in stock that I would need because they are all um, actual caps, and I don't want to uh, use radial caps for that. You can, of course, you can do that. They are electronically the same, but um, you have to bend the legs and, and do some workarounds and put some insulation on there and stuff like that so it's it's not really it, it's it works but it's not pretty so i don't i'm not going to do that today what i am going to do today has to do with the power supply in this thing so the power supply uh looks like this or it doesn't look like this this is the schematic um, view of course um the main reason i printed this schematic out uh is that you can see which voltages the power supply uh, puts out. So, and as you can see, we have 12 volts at 1.6 amps and 5 volts at 1 amp to 4 amps. So, that's basically all we need 5 volts, 12 volts, and ground. And uh, as this power supply is a pretty old. 90s power supply. Um, it's a switch, switching power supply, which is good. It's pretty efficient, but it's not a particularly good one. And it's an old one, and there are large caps in there that are pretty uh, old. So it's prob probably not going to work um, well forever. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I looked through some forums and stuff, and these are um, pretty prone to failure uh, these days because they are not very well built and uh, basically they are not not made by Atari they are made by what they are called Fiong Enterprise uh, whatever so they Atari bought these because they are pretty standard um, PSUs and they are not very good so what I'm going to do today is to see if I can fit a better uh, more modern new PSU inside my Mega ST um, to be to be sure that the PSU doesn't fail and in the worst case take um, parts of the computer with it. So basically what I'm going to do is to open this up again and see if I can fit this uh, Meanwell, what is it, an RD50A inside there, which basically looks like this. It has um, screw terminals for live and neutral. This is the mains input. It has a ground lock. It has an ad adjustment port for the 5 volts. And basically it has um, ground, 5 volt and 12 volt. Output, uh, 5 volt at 6 amps, 12 volt at 2 amps. So that's plenty of headroom if we um, want to connect something else to the Atari. And I always, I always like to go a bit higher uh, amperage than the originals because these don't run as hot usually and um, are probably going to last for a longer time if you get a bit, a bit over the rating you need, really. So they are not, not pushed to their limits. So um, the only real concern I have about this at this point is if we can fit this inside the Mega ST because it's pretty flat and the old PSU is very very um, flatly built. I think I looked at the measurements and um, we might have to cut the RF shield that's under here a bit to fit this inside. Otherwise it should be pretty straightforward really. Hopefully. <laughs> Never know of course. So let's get right into it. So 
So here's the pretty serious RF shield. Uh, and it is affixed with these little metal tabs that just bend. And I didn't bend them all that much. I didn't think I bent all of them. Ah, we have to loosen the drive. You have to loosen the drive a bit. I didn't remember that. So we have to... It's not stay there. Can't probably stay there. There we go. Okay. So, and here's our original PSU as the um, fee phone. So let's see if how the form factor of the new one is a bit smaller. And it's I think it's just as high as yes, probably it will probably fit. Yeah, basically what we what we need to do is to get rid of this one, put this one in, and uh, connect it up. Yeah, let's work something out. I'm, I'm just going to remove the old um, power supply and then, uh, yeah, let's see. Just removing this. Okay, so these are our inputs coming directly from the power switch. We can keep the power switch, of course. Yeah, that's going to work quite well, I guess. And I think... Let's just remove these wires so we can uh, freely move this. I think I'm just going to clip them because I have to strip them anyway to make good contacts with my screw terminals then. I think. So, and this actually fits very nicely in here. It, it just fits beside these terminals here. And if I take out this insulation layer here, because the, the case is ground anyway, the only thing we need to do is to make some holes to screw mount this on here, I guess. And then we can mount it from the bottom. It has two um, screw holes here, which probably even fit the, the old screws. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we can reuse the old screws there. And yeah, that's basically... And I think I, I want my, my screw terminals on this side, facing, facing inside. So all we have to do really is to run some wires from the mains to the input screw terminals, connect the ground, which will we'll just... I think we're just going to cut this wire, which is the ground wire from the old PSU, and just use that. And if I com remember correctly, we can just take this whole thing out. There are two screws here, I think, that we just have to remove, that affix it to the case there. Yep. So we can take the whole bezel out and work on it. Nice! So we have to do, make some holes there. <laughs> okay, I got me some reasonably nice holes here. Okay, these are a bit large because somebody broke my smaller drillbit. Absolutely fine, I guess. And the screws do fit. This isn't going anywhere, really, so that's cool. And as a matter of fact, the cables are just long enough to reach around here, I guess. This is actually a pretty nice switch, because it switches both on the live and the neutral. Don't have that in most um, power supply switches, I guess. That's pretty good. 
So let's see if we can fit them in there. Um, the black one is the live one. Yes, it is. Screwing it tightly in there. It's not going anywhere. So there we go, that's our uh, mains connection done. <laughs> Let's see about the uh, other wires there. Yeah, it's pretty tough to see on camera, but the voltages are actually um, printed on the circuit board of the old um, power supply. So the red wires are 5 volts. So I'm just gonna write this down. Red, whoa. Red plus 5 volts. Blue plus 12 volts black is ground. It has to go into this connector um, so we are coming from here around here so we have to make some longer wires. So just checking the grounds and there's basically three ground wires and the um, red wires is two 5 volts wires are joined on the PCB anyway so we can just join them and put a longer wire on there that goes into our new power supply or rather out of our new power supply so we can we can put out the voltage um, from one terminal on the power supply and um, use one common ground or two common grounds yeah probably we'll, we'll make that two yeah uh, I'm just I'm just cutting the leads here it is we have to strip them anyway but I'm just um, we could of course if I had the right tools which I believe I I have but I don't know if these connectors are you could um, you could basically slide out these little metal tabs here um, and put crimp the wires in there, the new wires, and make a proper connection. Uh, but I think I have I have like a like a crimping tool, but I don't have these little connectors to crimp stuff onto that fit this. So uh, yeah I'm going to go with solder and some uh, heat shrink tubing. And obviously we have to use um, some proper wires here too, because there's quite some current going through these. That's probably why they have two um, small wires for the 5 volts and three ground wires, because there's quite some current going through there. So I'm using, this is like like mains cable um, that I got from a from the main cable. I'm just using that because it's blue and I got a red wire and I got uh, a brown wire which is going to be my ground. It's not the it, it's not adequate color for a ground connection but this is uh, it's only low power no mains voltage going through there so I'm just gonna take the brown one for the ground. Sue me! <laughs> So now we can connect these uh, wires that we just made to our screw terminals. Uh, ideally, that would be great. Okay, got our 5 volts here. Then we got, I'm just using the ground that's closer to the 5 volts where I connected two ground wires as the common ground here which doesn't matter because it's all connected together anyway, I guess. Nice. Okay, and then I am going to use the plus V, which is the 12 volts in this case. I'm going to use this one here, the blue wire that comes from the blue wire. And then I'm going to use the other common ground thing 
for the other terminal there, the other com terminal. Okay, and then we have to connect our uh, case ground here, or our mains ground, which is the same in this case. Yeah, for that purpose we are going to remove the little ground cable from the uh, PSU thing and reconnect it to the case ground. Mm, so I think I made up my mind, I'm just going to make a new um, ground cable uh, and crimp on one of these ring connectors here to that one, because they, this goes straight to the transformer and I might have to continue using this or maybe I'm going to sell it or something, so I'm just going to keep that on there, otherwise it won't be won't be easy to, to use again, so, okay. So I'm going to use my uh, crimping tool here, which is just a cheap crimp one. It's insulated uh, crimp thingos. So the wire goes all the way in there. And then I'm going to put this Just going to push it and hopefully, yes, we have a crimped connection that's insulated. That's pretty nice. Okay, so that's a proper ground wire now. Okay, so this can go like here, I think. works pretty nicely, okay. And these screws are just, yeah, that's that's how it's supposed to be. So that's ground. And it's also grounded through the screws that um, keep the case in place because the case, I think, is ground on these two. Okay, just double checking the ground connection here. So this is our ground. Yeah, that's all connected. And we have ground on the case too, everywhere on the PCB. That's nice. Okay, so it's all grounded now. So the thing that's not so great in this new setup here is that our hot wires just uh, are just on the side there next to the ground. I am going to put some insulation on there. I'm just going to use the insulation that was on the bottom of the old uh, power supply. And cut. Cut it a bit. Hope that's possible. And then put that on there. So then I'm just going to stuff it in here and put some put some tape on there. Doesn't look too bad. Mm, let's get some voltages. Let's test it. Okay. Turning it on. And this should really, it shouldn't run without a load, I guess. It gives me a squeaking sound. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. I'm just quickly going to check the voltages. They should be all right anyway. Okay, there's our five volts, 5.7. And there's our 12 volts, which is 11.71, which is, it's good enough. Nice. And you can't hear it, but it's giving out a pretty much a little whining noise. Um, it shouldn't do that if it's connected to the computer because it only does it, hopefully, while running without a load. Okay, so here we go. First test. And the drive does light up, indeed. And I can't hear any whining noise anymore. <laughs> so that's exactly 
what it's supposed to do. Nice! And the drive is seeking, but I don't have anything connected, obviously, so I can't really test that. I think I'm going to cable tie some stuff together there, so it's a bit neater. But it totally seems to work. Nice! So I made these cables a bit long, but that won't matter much. I'm just going to cable tie them together. Look at this, there's a plastic uh, sheet there, connected there. Should probably remove that to have at least some airflow through these vents here. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that so the um, power supply has some airflow. That's probably going to be air. Yeah, I just snap it off there. Okay, and you probably remember my uh, yellow sunny mouse that I used in the last Atari ST video because I didn't have a proper um, Atari ST mouse, uh, which originally came with these because they are basically STs. So thanks to AVX Studios on Twitter, at AVX Studios is the Twitter handle, uh, basically I should, if everything worked out and it's really in there, should have one now, which is something I've never had because I was an Amiga guy back in the day. <laughs> I guess these are equally as bad as the original Amiga mice. Probably made by the same manufacturers. Anyway, so um, this is like a perfect match, so I'm pretty happy. Thank you AVX Studios. Um, yeah. I don't know which which one should connect where. Probably the mouse goes here because it goes to the right side if you are right-handed. Can put the cable in here. Are you ready for a test run? Yay, we are. One thing I learned from the comments to the last video is that you can speed up this um, looking for floppy disk uh, process by just inserting a formatted floppy disk. So the Atari has a floppy and then it boots into the system no matter what's on the floppy. Um, if you insert an empty floppy you can boot into the system much faster. It's now it's no seeking for a disk for, for quite a long time. So there we are, That's, uh, that seems to work. It was kind of easy. So yeah, that seems to work. Nice. And it doesn't, it doesn't hum or anything anymore. It doesn't do anything really. So yeah, this, this thing uh, seems to work just fine. I am going to test it for a while and play some stuff on it and uh, test some of the games that you suggested in the comments to the last video. And I have some games I remember from back in the day. So there's probably going to be an episode where I play some games. Maybe I'll try and live stream. I recently got a new camera from the money that's used webcam basically. They are hilariously expensive for what they can do. Um, new, that's a full HD webcam, uh, that I recently bought with the money I got from my Patreon supporters. So if you want to support me to make stuff like this possible in the future, uh, feel free to check out my Patreon page, I'll link that in the corner. And yeah, everybody else, this uh, seems to be a full success. The um, Weanwell Power supplies are generally uh, speaking pretty well made and uh, 
I have used quite some of them in the past. I didn't use this particular one, but uh, it seems to do the trick pretty nicely and the specs are pretty amazing. They have like over voltage protection and uh, a self regenerating fuse and stuff like that. So that's it's pretty good stuff. They are probably, this is probably much cleaner um, noise wise than the uh, one that was in there before. Basically they are just really really good power supplies and I highly recommend them. And they are not that expensive. I think this um, size power supply was like 15 euros or something. It's not not um, that much given that it makes your machines, probably makes your machines live longer. And not much more to say. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hope you stay tuned for more videos. Uh, I'm Jan Peter. Thanks. See you all soon on my channel. Hopefully. Goodbye.